Okay, thank you for participating in 100% commitment. Now, the next activities, I'm going to start with Hajime and Yame. You want to learn some Japanese words as well, you know, in this training. So, Hajime means begin, Yame means stop. Hajime, Yame. Hajime, Yame. Alright? So, see, some, you know, some other banks, you know, came to my training not too long ago, then we said, hey, you know what? I know when you network, instead of giving your business card, give them like 10 bucks. So, you pull out like 10 bucks. The person's like, huh? Why are you giving money? Oh, I'm on a bank. We have plenty of these at the bank. If you want more of it, uh, you can actually borrow some money. Uh, you know, that's like, oh, at least you get their attention, you know, something different. We, we gave some, some, you said, oh, this violates the bank's policy and stuff. Well, well, you get the money in, that, that's okay, that bank policy is not matter. Yeah, so some other crazy, any, any crazy ideas going around? You feel like, hey, that's a pretty crazy idea, but I think it's workable. See, the main purpose of this is when you give out your business card doing that, you're like, whoa, this is cool. Rather than, oh, yeah, oh, okay. You know, you keep it away. It's create a depression. It's like before you even open your mouth, your card already killed them. Big impression, of course. Now, you have to brainstorming some cool ideas. What's a cool idea? Really cool. Trick secret. Okay. Now, that's only, that's only that he implemented. Okay, so I'm going to move on. You want to touch the bus on this? So you need to create an impression. Railway, you know, create a railway based card, something like that. You know, it's, it's my name card is 80 cents per per 1,000 uh, quantity. 80 cents. Whoa, you need to print like 15 cents. <laughs> this is marketing. You know, need to invest. Okay, so that's all about cards. So what do you sell in a networking event? Visual. What is visual? Visual is? What you see, right? So in, in networking, what do you sell visually? Okay? So that's all. Yeah, you sell your parents, you sell your clothing, where you're wearing a coming fly, where you're wearing some, you know, some other clothing brand. Sell good Armani versus Fadi. This is coming back. I think I'm coming back. So, anyway, so what, what kind of, how you stand, all this visually, your hair, I don't know hair, so. <laughs> but anyway, some of you, you know, whether you, you trim your hair, nose hair, especially guys, you know, trim it, please, for mankind's sake, you know. So, visually, that needs to be appropriate, need to pass. Next, you sell auditory. What do you sell auditory in a networking thing? It's your voice, the sound tone, the sound, the speed. I talk really fast. If I talk to people a bit slow, then you have to slow down to match the other person. Some talk very loud, right? Hey, friend, welcome! So you have to match the energy as well. So if that's auditory. Kinesthetic, what is the most basic kinesthetic thing that you actually sell in a networking event? Your handshake. Have you ever shaked a person's hand? It's like the person wants to hold your finger. <laughs> Don't you hate that? Yes. Now we Malaysians are very polite. So whenever we face this kind of encounter, you just act as if nothing happened. Right? But you can't just say, hey, let's do it again. Let's do a proper one. Okay, so kinesthetic, touching people. Is it appropriate to touch people? Yes, it is appropriate to touch people. Next question, is it appropriate for guys to touch girls? Culture, I, I'm taking away the culture thing. Huh? Like you go Middle East, the guy will come and kiss you, you know, get a culture shock. Those are culture, okay? If you stand a, a, a little bit far away from a man in the Middle East, they take it as an insult. You can go really near and talk to him like the nose is touching your nose. But that's culture. I'm taking all those things away. So without the culture thing, um, where should a guy touch a girl if they want to touch in a business setting? <laughs> Shake hands, someone? Shoulders is safe. Oh, by the way, that's... 
But when I say touching, it's not actually touching, it's actually tapping. Because touching is rabba rabba. Right? <laughs> <laughs> and if your hand is there for too long, then you get a lawyer letter, you know? <laughs> so it's tapping. It's like, good point. Then you pull back. Just a tap. And it creates a bonding. Another safe place is, of course, elbow. The rest, I don't recommend. <clears throat> hand, I, I, I don't recommend. So I recommend only elbow and shoulder. And tapping, huh? Because the moment you go and... Nice to meet you too. You know? She's like... <laughs> Only tapping. Now, women with guys. Now, some women are technically more touchy feely people. And sometimes they touch people, they touch people, guys very strong. Anywhere else okay. Anywhere else okay for a guy's context. But for women, where should you touch? Same. Nah. And sometimes I women like they're so excited, they start holding my hand. Oh, let me tell you the secret. It's like, uh, should I? I know it's kind of nice, but should I tell her to let go? <laughs> yeah, for guys, they don't tell you. No. So tap, ladies, please tap, tap. Okay, then you're more uh, in the business setting. So, kinesthetic, what's olfactory? Smell. It's smell. Do you smell good? See, a lot of salespeople, we run around, we sweat a lot. From here, you know, some of you actually do the, the Marlboro thing. <laughs> Uh, so these are all smell. If a smoker meets a non-smoker, you better stay away from non-smokers like me. The moment you walk here, it's like, hi. <laughs> I will bounce back because I, I, I can't stand it. Same. But the smoker is smoker and you want to go smoke? Yes, red <laughs> You know? So. How to smell? Very important. Basics. These are basics. Huh? And gustatory. What's gustatory? Yes. Taste. Taste. So before in event, what should you do? Three things. Name cards. Bring lots of name cards. If you know you come to a, a networking event, you should have at least how many business cards? One box of business cards, that's correct. So I went to a, a, a seminar, and there's this lady sitting behind me. So after the break, I turned to her, talk, 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 and she put a name card. It's a Kwan Sui something, something, Jeffy uh, Susan Jia, Dr. something, Susan Jia, Jeffy Weiss. That's Jeffy Chia's wife. And she has one box of business cards. So I asked her, hey, why do you bring one box of business cards? I said, oh, because I want to meet people. Oh, okay. So one box of business cards whenever you go to that working function is basics. And of course, one more box in the car just in case. Never be in a situation where, oh, can I have a business card? Oh, sorry, finito. How many do you bring? I bet you about eight business cards to the networking event. Oh, no, you bring at least one box of business cards. Okay. That's one preparation, and make sure your card looks good. Second preparation, set a target. I have a customer, he went to a networking event. So she, is it he, sorry, it's he. He, he told me, um, hey, let's go to a networking event. I said, why not? I, said, I asked him, how big is the event? Is it about 100? So I asked him, so in a 100 people event, how many business cards do you normally walk out with? He says, 100 people, maybe about 20. Okay, that sounds okay. So I told him one thing only, okay? In the next business event, I want you to double that number. Walk in with the mindset of, I'm walking out with 40 business cards. Do the normal thing that you normally do, but this time just set 40. Cool? Okay. The floor walk in, finish the business networking, walk out, how many business cards did he get? 40. Because that's the target, that's the quota. Okay, I walk out with 70. Oh, okay, not too bad, better than him. <laughs> So it's, you need a target every single time you go to a networking event because that will give you your behavior. If not, you say, I'm just going to learn something and I don't want to meet people, then you walk out with three. Uh. That's not networking, uh. that's uh, uh, socializing. Yeah. Have great energy because people like to mingle around with people with great energy. So these are three things you should do before you go to any networking event. Bring out your name card, make sure that name card looks good, set a target, and have great energy. Now at the event, which is something that's important now, let's see what is the biggest mistake people make at networking. So I'm going to show you a video clip. Watch carefully. And look for all the mistakes this fellow is making. Hello. 
over there and there. Roger of Metcalf, how are you, Beryl? Actually, it's Betty. <laughs> yes, of course. Having a good time, are you? Oh, yes, yes, meeting lots of interesting people. <laughs> I've spoken to dozens of people today, I didn't tell you. I've given out lots of cards, in fact, yes. So tell me, Barbara, what do you do? <laughs> it's Betty. Yes. Um, I'm a marketing <laughs> executive, you know, working a lot with blue chip companies at the moment and uh, making quite an impression in the States, I can tell you. Oh, very interesting. Yes, it is. I'm a marketing too. Well, that's you know, marvellous, Beryl. I'm sure my business could help you. Yes, in fact, we're helping so many businesses at the moment, you can't afford to miss out. Look, let me give you my card. Give me a call sometime, and uh, I'm sure we can do business. <laughs> can I give you my card? Oh, yes, of course. Uh, thank you. You know, if you're spending money on marketing mail, then I'm your man. <laughs> what is that? Very interesting. Tell me, how exactly? That guy over there. Oh, a multi million pound player, I can tell you. Have to give him my card. That's sweet of you, too. All right, two minutes, turn to the panelists, to you, and list out all the mistakes this fellow made in this network event. Two minutes, go. Hajime! <laughs> Play wrongly. 
and, and it's not to, to rip you off, you know, create a game where you can get money. No, it's the money will flow within yourself. I'll play at the end, there's time. Remind me of the hunter game, okay? When there's time. And it, it requires a movement, means you have to stand and walk. Yes. And if you stand still, you're the first to, to, to go. Okay, remind me, hunter game? Now the best way to sell is when people ask you, so what do you do? Have you got this before? 100% of the time people will always ask you, so what do you do? And what are your common response? Are you getting responses like this? Wow, great, please tell me more. Ladies and gentlemen, there's a security, we need to evacuate the building in 5 minutes time, all stand! No, I'm just kidding, I don't know what the hell it is. Anyway. <laughs> Maybe it is, uh, anyway. So your response must be, wow, is that what you do? Please tell me more. Second response is, whoa, I really need your services. I really need that. So it's like you seduce them and created the need instantly and, and they give you the buying signal. Third is, my God, you know what? You should talk to John. John will love to, to or you should talk to my sales director. He must see, he must listen to what you have to then, so these are the three responses that you must have, at least, rather than, oh, okay, you know why people don't get these kind of responses? Because they are five conventional openers. Not wrong, but conventional. Sales Ninja is built on unconventional. Unconventional is a big term, but it, but it technically means different. As long as you are different, in every single thing that you do, it becomes unconventional. So first, Convent, uh, first conventional opener is you go with a title. Oh, I am a real estate agent. Or I do sales. Or I'm a banker. I own a restaurant. So you go with a title. Second conventional opener is you go with your products or services. Oh, I sell accounting software. Oh, product language management. Or oh, we are shipping, uh, we buy shipping services or whatever your products and services are. So that's second conventional opener. That conventional opener is variety. Oh, we do a lot of things, man. <laughs> and you say, oh, I'm a trainer. I, I do customer service. I do leadership skills. Part time, I do blowing balloon <laughs> techniques. <laughs> you know, on the weekends, I, I, I crush aluminium can. Oh, by the way, did I tell you I was I'm also with Kima, uh, Kiwani, with Rotary, with Lion, with Junior Chambers, and so with MCA, with MCU, with Alumu. I do <laughs> How do they remember this color S? So the more you tell people what you do, the more they will forget about you because they have positioned yourself as the Malaysian favorite project. You know? People will remember you as one or two things. Don't believe me? This is if you read the book Positioning by All Riders and Jack Crown, this is what they have to say. It's a classic marketing book, all you must read. Okay, anything and everything by All Riders and Jack Crown. Name me a soft drink brand that you know of. Number, uh, name me another one. Who is number three, do you think? Maybe, maybe not, you know. Some people say, no, 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 is it? Maybe it's other brand. So number one, the first brand that people normally think of is Coke. Second thing, Pepsi. This one is, or Pepsi number one, or Coke number two, depending on how they touch you through their marketing channel. But that's how it is. But number three, Penta, uh, Grape, Zephyr, whatever. Seven up, la, don't cut out here. <laughs> you know, that depends on how they touch you. And number three is always different. Number one and number two is always there. Name me number one A4 people that you know of. Double A or oh, some different board. Number two? Oh, India Kya so charming. <laughs> no, I don't. India Kya la. Ah. So, name me the number one luxury car you can think of. Number two? That's a different, different, different category. So Mercedes, BMW. Mercedes, BMW. Of course now Lexus is penetrating one of these categories. Depends on the stakes. But in the long run, people always remember the top two. Always top two, top two, top two. That's why positioning is creating a category where you can be number one or number two. And people remember you. Like Asian is number one unconventional sales training. Do you know why I'm Asian number one unconventional sales training? Because I'm the only one, you know. Because I created this category. No one is in this category except for me. And then this thing is number one. So that's positioning. Strategy. Okay, anyway. So other conventional openers, technical. I'll show you another video. 
Technical means whatever that comes out of your mouth so what exactly sounds like this. That's basically the conventional of being technical. What do you do? I do CRM, you know, I help people do this, do that. You don't, and you don't understand. And you need to, the word maybe it's dumbed down, or maybe it's simplify. Simplify our networking pitches so that people outside our industry actually knows what we are talking about. Because sometimes we know all the technical terms, all the jargons, and you go to, let's say, you know, uh, uh, Real Estate Association. Everyone knows what you're talking about. But let's say the real estate guys go to water treatment filtration uh, expo. Then it's a totally different world. They need to simplify so everyone there will be able to understand. Okay? So technical openness are not recommended. And also linkers. Linkers means oh, my customers is like uh, in Asia, Unilever, EFG. I have very, very big customers. And you just tell them when you when you just met people, that's like the guy very arrogant. Oh, I just called this client with this big company. So you don't do that when you meet them. But when they ask, you tell them, you impress them. When they don't ask, you give give these kind of things to them. Then it's uh, bragging in a way. So these are not wrong, but what what what, what, what I would categorize as conventional openness. So what are some unconventional openness? Share with you two basic ones. First is what I call pain openness. Very simple. What do you do? I work with, name your target market. Say you work with small businesses. Hey, what do you do? I work with small businesses who are struggling to get more sales. So what I do is I help them increase sales. Full stop. Done. Different. Rather than, hey, what do you do? I do sales training. What do you do? I am an accountant. So when you say, hey, I am an accountant. That statement itself has positioned yourself as same with the rest of the accountants, right? You see, we are Asians number one unconventional sales training. Oh, cool. That's only me. No, of course they don't know. Okay, so uh, this one approach. Second approach is the gain openness. What do you do? Oh, I work with, because pain openness is more like creating a problem. A problem solution kind of approach. Gain open and straight away. What do you do? Oh, I help people increase sales. Or what do you do? I help people, I help salespeople kick their competitors' butt. Funny? Different. Okay, so you gotta create something like like this. Um, next. A sticky strategy. When you go networking, you must always do this. Always be the first person to ask this question. Always be the first person to ask, so what do you do? Never let the other person ask you first. You know why? <gasps> you know, in sales presentation, a common rule of presentation, you must always customize the presentation to the person you're talking to, right? So in networking events, same thing. You're customizing your presentation to the person you're talking to. So let's say the person, the target market, he says, hey, so what do you do? I ask the person. He says, oh, I'm a printer. Then he replies, so what do you do? Oh, we provide sales training to printers like yourself to help them maximize profits and get more deals. So it's like, hmm? And if you talk to another person, that pitch is different. So everyone, uh, the pitch to everyone is different. And that's what makes you different. Instead of being, having a common pitch. Of course, the presentation mistake is you always present the, the, the same pitch to another to the same person, and that's a common mistake. You must always customize the presentation. Okay, so that's the sticky strategy. So, what is the skill sets needed to do effective?
effective networking. So we're gonna do role plays now, okay? There's a, this is a mixture of different training methods. There is workshop, there is brainstorming, there is role plays. So how to enter a conversation? And how to enter a group? This is the, the skill that most people are not being exposed. Four of us are talking. Do you or do you not approach them? Do you know how to approach them? What should you say? What should you do? So I'm going to share with you this secret. How to approach groups. You can do this anywhere you go. You'll get plenty of contacts and networking. Okay? This is my favorite technique, approaching groups. Because no one will touch them. I will penetrate this set. So how to start a conversation one-on-one. -on -one. How to start a conversation with one to many. And how to make them attracted to you and make yourself the center of attention. So we do role plays and how to exit a conversation properly. You know, sometimes you, uh, this is a, okay, this is a common ground seminar, so all of you have common ground. Let's say uh, you, you attend some networking functions, where it's just wine and dine, you stand there, you've got nothing to, much to talk about. Sometimes when you want to approach a group, two fellas talking there, you approach them, talk, 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 and two of them actually ignores you, you will, and it will happen because both of them are in rapport. When you enter, you actually break their rapport. Some people don't like that. So how do you exit or how do you grab the rapport? So that's a skill on how to approach groups and how to exit. Okay, so now let's do a role play. There are two ways to do a one-on-one -on -one approach. So we're gonna do role play number one, A and B. So you're gonna grab a partner, A and B. A will be the coffee drinker. You know when you go to that working function, you see some jokers holding coffee cups standing by the corner. <laughs> Only one person standing there. Happens a lot. Hopefully it's not you. But then you see a lot of these people waiting for you to approach. Correct or not? Once you open a conversation, blah, 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 the flow will go. Because there are two theories to this. Theory number one is theory of evolution. I won't talk about that. But theory number two is quite real because it's the mother's rule. Remember when you were a little kid and your mom said, hey, don't talk to strangers or they'll kidnap you, cut off your hands and legs and bring you to Thailand so you can back for life. I don't know, but that's what my mom conditioned me at. Don't talk to strangers. So when I was a little kid, I always get scared. Look at strangers, don't talk to them, right? But now we're adults, you know, look at strangers, you must talk to them. No money, no talk. In sales, no talk, no money. <laughs> so you need to talk. You need to approach people. And yeah, so, but that is still inside our brains. Evolution theory is the genes. Mother theory is the belief system. Belief system says talk to strangers equals danger. So I don't talk to strangers. So that's the belief set. And then my warrior program, you know, I have to talk a little bit of that. Um, so we're going to do A and B. A will be coffee drinker, B will be networker. So networker approaches coffee drinker, two approaches. First is called what I call direct approach, my favorite one. You go in there, hey, would you like to exchange business contacts? Never has once been rejected before. Of course, you don't go to wedding dinner and go and do this, uh, a bit strange and weird. I don't do it in wedding, but in a business setting, expos, exhibitions, seminars, in-house in customers, all these are perfectly fine. Go there, direct approach. Would you like to exchange business contacts? 100% success rate. Second approach, indirect approach. Indirect means, hey, how do you find seminar? Is the food good? Is the coffee warm? Nice or not? Those kind of stuff. You just create a little small talk. Then you, then you fit into the conversation and I'll share with you the pitch, how you build your pitch in five minutes time to sell and, and make them attracted to you. Okay, so let me repeat the activities. A and B. A will be coffee drinker. B will be networker. So what you're going to do is just approach Either direct, which is what I recommend, would you like to exchange business contacts? Then they know you are talking to them for business, not because you want to hit on them or what. <laughs> or second approach, indirect. Just create small talk of any topics you can think of. Normally you relate to seminars or stuff you attended to. And you will stop immediately after that. So it's not, it's not like a five minute conversation that you do. It's just the first approach because you have deeper things. Now, once you're done with that, you switch. That example, can I borrow you for a second?
This, by the way, will be my business card, so Kendra, can you please stand? So Kendra will be a coffee drinker. So coffee drinker drinks coffee. So I walk in, I smile, it's not like... You know, I'm not praying on her. <laughs> so I'm like smiling and just say, hey, hey, hi, would you like to exchange business contacts? Oh, cool. I'm Hanzo. It's my business card. Can I have yours? Okay, done. To stop. Very easy, right? Okay, so I get my money back. So that's the only thing you do. It's very simple. This is very simple. It's just that people don't want to do it. <laughs> In a way. Okay, so that's all you need to do. And you switch. So this will take less than 20 seconds for both to practice. So you've got to stand, coffee drinker, and networker. Then you switch, coffee drinker becomes networker, networker becomes coffee drinker. Once you are done with that, then I will go to how to push groups, which is something is needed. Okay? So, any questions? No? Let's take 30 seconds for this activity. So please stand. Please stand. After lunch, it's good to move around.